Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. It's been a good week. Been a good week. Most high has been awesome. Come on now. I need to hear a lot more praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Joy in your heart, Israel. Come on. Come on. It's the Shabbat. Let us enter into his rest. Hallelujah. 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 Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. As real family.
it's already on. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, and out of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that, which in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the water under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I am Yahweh your Elohim, and my jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers and the children, the, to the third and fourth of those who hate me but shall not make commitment to the thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You do not be in the name of Yahweh to not, for Yahweh does not limit hunt and punish who brings names not. Remember the Shabbat set it apart. Six days you will do all your work, but the seventh days is the Sabbath of Yahweh Him. You do not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your trains within your gates. For in six days you have in heaven the earth, the sea, now that is in them, and rest the seventh day. Therefore, you bless the seventh day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which your Elohim has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet neighbor's house, you do not covet neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. All right, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hey, uh, Elder, give me a little bit of sound in, in these monitors up here. Everybody all right? Y'all yes, should be all right. At least y'all not getting death threats. I'm in good company, ain't I? This stuff seems to be showing out on the biblical scale all the time, don't it? Who come up to, to steal, kill, and destroy? Thief does, don't he? Y'all's good, though, ain't he? Most high, y'all, we thank you for another Shabbat. We ask humbly this day that you will speak to us your words of truth. Pray these sins sink deep down our hearts. Magnificent name, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Maybe seated. Well, we had an opportunity to go up there and um, lay that body of Mother Beasley's to rest. Um, Man, I tell you, when you go out there and you start seeing the condition of this world, you know, people who are not affiliated with us, man, it's cold. These people are cold, hard, callous, and unmovable. They are dug in. I mean, Satan got them. Satan really, really, truly has them. And, um, I tell you, if there ever was a time for us to guard our hearts, this is it. Because what he's taking people out on is very cheap. A cheap price to pay for eternal life. It really is. I mean, after all, all this in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and then here's the part that I kept seeing up there. Pride of life. Pride of life. It's bad. It's really, 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 truly bad. And what's going on in the day we live in? And of course, the problem that we're having is that everybody is trying to judge everybody based on the lenses that they see people from, based on the perspective that they have accepted. Do you not marvel that we have one book get so many different opinions? And nobody willing to sit down and, and intelligently argue these points. I mean, even if you did do that, some people are already, um, they're, they're already so pro-man that no matter what they say, the truth has to take a back seat to them. Am I making sense? And it's bad. And I, I, you know, I really 
truly don't think that we're going to understand why the Most High God has brought us this way um, out of all the other ways it could have went until we get to the kingdom and then find out that, man, he led us to the remnant. He really, truly led us to the remnant. I, I listen to people, and I listen very carefully. I listen with a critical ear. And, of course, if there's any charges levied, you know what I mean, you won't pay attention to those things. Only one problem, though. Just because someone asserts something, that does not mean that it's truthful or that it's necessary that you give it your attention. Does that make sense? I mean, anyone that points the finger and levy charges, the burden of proof is on them, and it's up to them to be able to prove their claim. And we don't have too much of that going on today. We don't have too much in proof of claim, but we do have a lot of uh, natural mudslinging. There's a bunch of that going on. You know what I mean? I mean, last night, that, that guy called me a pedophile. Now, I don't mind being called names. I've been called all kind of names. You know what I mean? But a pedophile, man? If that's the case, I mean, we got three or four of them on the registry that live up here around the corner. Why come my name ain't on it then? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's the same thing I tell everybody. Anybody, you know, you can write a lie like someone can tell a lie. And all opinions are not valid just because someone has an opinion. You see, I'm the type of man, and this is the way I believe you should be. I get it from the book. I believe that you should always be able to face your accuser. And you should be willing as a man to be face-to-face -face with anyone that accuses you. You follow me? But when you, are, when you bring an accusation, it needs to be a valid accusation. Not something that just somebody just makes up. You understand what I mean? Because all men don't have knowledge in them. They, they literally truly don't. I just, Kabir sent me a, a video this morning. Um, there's this, uh, now watch this. Now listen, I know sometimes I sound prejudiced on certain things. And I probably need to find that word because then they think I'm prejudiced against y'all white folk. That's amazing. You know what I mean? If you don't define these words and stuff, then people, you know what I mean? It's anyway. I know at times I sound like I'm prejudiced and stuff, but there are certain things that I personally believe exempts you from being a leader in the assembly. Are you hearing me? That's just me personally. So when I get a guy out there that's, that's a so-called, you know, allegedly uh, teaching, well, let me show you what a, a code is. Are you following me? And he, he's going to presume to teach on what they believe to be a cult. Now, most people take the word cult in a negative, kind of, in a negative way. I don't. I embrace it and wear it like a glove. Because what it does, it, it lets us all know that there's a distinction. You know, people who are not walking in the same step. You know, that shirt Kabir and May said, cult. Sure. That's basically what it's about. But, um, if, if, if you're going to come and, and allegedly so-called challenge me, don't the Bible say they that preach the gospel must do what? You got to be a living example then, right? Is that right? Don't be no big fat pastor weighing 300 pounds, eating pork chops and sausage and bacon. And you expect for me to have some respect for you and listen to you? You understand what I mean? I guarantee that that assembly he got in there would never hear a message on gluttony. Now, am I being uh, maliciously vindictive against certain people because I talk about obesity? No, I'm just telling the truth that you don't want to hear. Is that making sense? Does not the Bible teach us about gluttony? And I'm not basing it on just because of your size. I'm basing it on, I can tell you're giving an appetite. Don't give me all this, this spiritual stuff. You know, I hear it all the time from women. Man, my thyroid. I'll say, good, so we'll move you to Ethiopia for six months and let's see how you do. No, it's real talk. It ain't your thyroid. 
It's your will. Yes, it is. I mean, I, I mean, you know, times when I don't exercise and keep this modular food unit up to par, it, it, it does tricks, man. It kind of expands a little bit. This gets smaller up here and this gets larger. You know, right? But like I use the analogy all the time. You should be doing more maintenance on this than you do that vehicle you drive all over the place. Hmm? Well, that vehicle is my livelihood. Well, this is not only your livelihood, but this is your, this is going to determine you where your spiritual state is going to be at. And sometimes we just reckless about the way we take care of the temple of Yah. Isn't that right? I mean, we got plenty of room in here right now, which is good to have. But this ain't nothing but a, a building. It don't become a place or a house of worship until the people get in it. Other than that, there ain't nothing holy about this place. That's why you don't never see any signs up out there that say, church. Look around. See if you see any signs say, church, tabernacle, temple. You know the reason why? Because we are the temple of y'all. Somebody say, well, why do you always refer to it as a tabernacle? I have to use terminology that you're familiar with. Because culturally, we've been mesmerized. We've been trained to believe that if we come into a, a designated place where everybody worshiped, then we would treat that place with reverence and honor while we really, truly, really, truly show y'all what we think about the real temple of Yah. Know the Bible says your body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit, yes, which temple you are. Yes, Don't he say it? Then he asks you, what house are you building him? Yes, so don't get mad at me because I talk about everything. If y'all hear me not talk a, about a subject, give me a little bit of time now. And if I'm a purposely avoiding a subject, you know, a viable subject, that's when you need to be concerned. Does that make sense? So when I get up here and talk about whoremongers, don't you know if I was a whoremonger, my own conscience would condemn me? But a whoremonger can't come up here and talk. Not about whoremonging. I believe a Ruach would tear him up before he get finished. Hmm? I sit and watch preachers preach, and I sit there and watch trying to preach a message and then have to back off that message. They literally had to back off that message. And the reason why they had to back off that message is because there was something in their conscience condemning them because the eyes, which is the window to the soul, was looking at them. And those spirits inside of them was already ministering to them while they were trying to minister. And then they would have to back off of what they were preaching. And I'd sit over and say, what happened? See, all y'all don't know all this is going on. But I know what's going on. You know what I mean? Because I'm just not living this thing just to be doing it for my health. If you understand what I mean. There's a spiritual realm that is going on. Are you following me? And that's the reason why that we need to put emphasis on not just the natural or the body, but we need to be, don't the Bible teach us we need to purge our conscience? Does it not teach us we need to purge our conscience? Because your conscience is what can condemn you, convict you. Yeah, it will too. Bro, teach saying you up there. Let's go to Luke chapter 11, verse 33. Let's go to the window here for a second. You all right? Go to the window here for a second, and then we're going to get started. 
But we can't concern ourselves too often with externals. You understand what I mean? Because it's all a distraction. You understand? But anytime somebody make a threat on my life, I take that serious. Now that is serious. You can keep your guard down, but my, my, I'm trying to determine if I ought to go ahead and get the TBI on them and go ahead and make an example out of them. Maybe I'll make him make a video and tell him, repent, nigga. If you don't, I'm going to get the law on you. Use the law for the lawless. I told y'all, you see the liquid courage that this modern day social media stuff does. Man, it, it hooks people up, brother. It gets them. Mm. Luke eleven thirty three. listen to the book. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, mm -hmm. but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. Read. The light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. Y'all hear that? So the light of the body is the eye. Why do you think sometimes you don't want to look at me? Uh-oh. You don't never know sometimes you're talking and... You ain't never did that with folk? If you want to know if somebody had their mouth on you, go up to them and love them. Oh, yeah. and, then, and if you don't know, have a conversation with them. And see, see, see how the eye contact goes. See, most times you, you just think they just looking around and all this other stuff. No, there's some darkness in there. Because the eye with, or the conscious which should have been single is no longer single anymore. Huh? Read. Therefore, when thine eye is single. When your eye is what? Single. Not double. Because remember, the book warned us against double-minded, being two-spirited. Are you following me? Single. Read on. Thy whole body. Your whole body is what? Also is full. You hear that? The whole body is what? Full or what? Empty. Full of life. Is it full or is it empty? Is it full or is it empty? It's full, full. right? Read. Full of light. Full of what? Light. Full of what? Light. And you're supposed to let your light so shine before me, ain't you? That it may see your good works. See, if I had my mouth on you, Alan, this is a form of darkness. How you doing, bro? Hey, bless you, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you trying to carry on a conversation with me. Yeah, and then what's why? And I ain't even looking at y'all. I'm looking at your forehead. And then you, you're talking, yeah, man. I act like I'm very attentive. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What y'all start doing, do this. <laughs> brother, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here, brother. Don't be afraid. Huh? Unless there's so much darkness in there that the light is emanating from me. It's condemning the darkness that's working in you. <laughs> Read. But when thine eye is evil. When your eyes is what? Evil. Read. Thy body also is full of darkness. Now, if your eye is evil, your body is full of darkness. That eye also means the conscious. When it's evil, it is full of darkness. You know, the book says, I've set your feet in open places. Hallelujah. That's what he said. It said, I've set your feet in open places. You know, you're supposed to be uh, have this liberty. I mean, you understand what I mean? This, this freedom. You understand what I mean? Because if a man hates his brother, he don't have the, 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 the Ruach abiding in him. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? <clears throat> And we murder more people with the tongue than we do with, with swords. Uh-oh. Did I say something wrong? The response, it looked like I said something wrong. You hearing this? Read. Take heed, therefore. Now, take heed means warning. Take heed means warning. 
What is the warning though? That the light which is in thee. Uh oh. That the light which is what? In thee. That, that is in you. Be not darkness. Be not what? Darkness. That's a garden right there. You have to really truly guard. Take heed that the light, all the goodness, all the anointing, all the pureness of conscience and mind and spirit makes you take heed to make sure that that which is in you don't be darkness, don't become darkness. How many people pay attention to that though? Ain't too many people pay attention to that. It's just one of those little accounts we just read over and pass on by. Read. If thy whole body therefore be full of light. If your whole body is full of light. Having no part dark. And no part dark. The whole shall be full of light. Y'all hear that? The whole shall be full of light. You notice there, you get around some people, it's just a joy to be around them. Huh? And you ever been around some people, you, even though you're around them, you go, ooh, what was that? Yeah. You ever had anybody over at your house, invite them in, and then when they left, I was like, well, what the, what the world is that? What did they leave here? Y'all ain't never had that before? Yeah. Or if you've ever been on the phone, have a conversation with yes. someone, yes. your day was going good, and all of a sudden, now you're getting bombarded yes, with all kind of crazy thoughts. Same thing with your conscience. Uh-oh. Read. As when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. If you take a candle, is it intended to put it over in the corner? Put a cover over top of it? And then light it so the whole room can be lit? Or are you supposed to put it on a mantle? We don't have mantles nowadays. They would, you know, put out in the open. The purpose of it is to, so everybody can see, right? Ain't you an open book, easily be read of all men? Shouldn't everybody be seeing there you? Shouldn't everybody be glad to come and read you? They should be ever glad to come read you, man. Shouldn't they? Well, some of us, we can't read because the book is closed. The book is closed because there's some evil in there. Uh-oh. I tell you what, I'm going to go preach and leave y'all alone, okay? Because I'm going to do. Let me know when I start preaching, okay? <laughs> but see, what's going on today is, and I, I know y'all, believe it or not, this is what happened. Anytime you see somebody coming out with vigor against someone, what they're doing is pointing the hatred that is in them. It's really in them. They're trying to project it on somebody else because they have no other way to unload. <laughs> Y'all hear me? They ain't got no other way to unload. So they got to unload somehow. You follow me? Now, a righteous man love judgment, right? Righteous man always love judgment. Just because a righteous man love judgment, the judgment has to be just, though. Does that make sense? I can't accuse him of hating. He ain't did nothing to me. Is that right? The way it's working today. Is it raining out there? Snow melting. That's some heavy duty snow, isn't it? Man. But anyway, y'all get what I'm saying though, right? So we, we got a lot of darkness that's working in the world today. A hell of a lot of it. And it ain't going nowhere until the king comes. Are you following me? But we can be little candles everywhere we go. You follow me? And we can continue to keep lighting up this world as long as we don't have our conscience condemning us. Is that all right? All right, let's roll here for a second. Anti-Christ or the anti-Messiah spirit is working overtime in this hour, Israel. 1 John 2.20 says, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Do you know, believe it or not, believe it or not, do you know that you actually know all things? Yes. Somebody go down there, wait a minute, Pastor, I don't know all things. Yeah, you do too. Let me explain. Let me explain. 
Don't you know truth when you hear it? Yes. You may not even know the subject, but you know truth when you hear it. Yes. When Jesus came knocking at your door, did you not know it? Yes. And if you know him, you know all things. Yes. And what he does, he gives you the things that you need when you need it. This is going to tie all in too because you begin to get an understanding about things. You may not even know the subject, but you don't notice that it's the spirit that bears witness to the truth. And then what you end up doing is going back and looking in the book, researching and studying it, but you're studying from a position of already knowing. And you know how that came about? Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. See what I mean? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, bing, just light bulbs start going on left and right. Huh? See, I'm one of the honest preachers in the world. I am. We be set up here in a message. We be set up here in a message, and the message be anointed. I go, whoo, hey! Y'all be saying like, man, don't that brother be preaching? Boy, let me, that man know something. Then I tell y'all, yeah, yeah, I just got it myself hot off the press. <laughs> First time me partaking of it. Sure was good. Y'all know good and well, y'all have heard me say that before. Huh? Yeah, I do. I got, man, I just got it myself. Can't wait to get back to hear this again. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is unction that we have from the Holy One. And you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Now, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Messiah. All right? He is, he is, that denieth the Father and the So I started, you know, looking at my Rastafarian nimbus. Sister Summer came up with, uh, we, we was uh, looking in, the, she was looking in the phone, so she says, you know, paraphrasing, you know that this marijuana stuff got different strands? Now, it's THC, right? That's the chemical thing that's in marijuana, right? Right? Do you know now there's a THCP? There's a THCV? And then there's a THC, I think it's PV. Now they're starting to add on to it. Chemical inducing. Now, I ain't, I've been around dope smoking all my life. Are you following me? I've seen people fired up. I mean, fired up. And I've been sitting right there watching them fired up. I've been sitting there watching them fired up, and I'll be going. I said, man, let me get a little bit of air. Something going on. <laughs> Brother Kabir tried to convince the world that he done smoked dope when he had, he, he had a roach. <clears throat> and they told him that don't count. You ever heard that stuff called contact high? Yes. I was not going. You give me a little bit more air, man. Now, I ain't, I'm saying I've never smoked dope before in my life, but I know the smell. I can pick that smell out. And anybody can pick it out. It's a very distinct smell. You know right? Now, I, everybody that I saw in the day that was, come on. You want something? Check it. Little, little good stick. <laughs> I said, look at him like this. <laughs> Man, if this city you threw all that, <laughs> no, I don't want none. <laughs> I mean, this city them through. Then I sit there and watch them, man. They'll take a, 
a, a damn joint, turn around and then blow it in each other's nose and face. And I go. <laughs> then when they get finished, their eyes bigger than mine, redder than mine. They say, I feel good. But I ain't never seen anybody on marijuana ever get aggressive. They usually take it the other way. This guy was foaming at the mouth. It's got to be one of those strands. The THCP or the THC. Y'all think I'm kidding. Don't, you, you still got the article in your phone? This is real stuff. See, this stuff is, is making folk mad nowadays. It's taking them the other way. But I found out the reason why the man is all mad at me. You know the reason why? Because he believed that Halle Selassie is the Messiah. How many times have we seen people turn around and go mad against us when they believe that King David is the Messiah? And they get what the Bible says, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Isn't that something? And they get mad because you don't. Now, with all the ministries in the world, why come pick on little old straightway, man? Those little old country people live way over here on, on the side of a mountain. Yeah, farmers. Gardeners. Then I come to find out that I baptized in, at a gots a few years ago. I was like, man, I didn't remember that. But why rage like that? Who he was on fire too, boy. I sent him a note. I said, make sure you keep that same energy when I meet you. So if you need to smoke a few, you go ahead and get fired up. I want the best of them. Did I say something wrong? But man, y'all, be, I'm telling everybody, y'all best stay away from that dope. We had people who used to be in here didn't think that I knew that they smoked dope still. Eating dope, cooking dope. And I was like, don't worry, that spot is gonna leave because every time I tell her, Father, get rid of them. Can't be no spot in our feast of charity, whatever it takes, get rid of them. Make up an excuse, but get rid of their ass. Because, see, I'm a villain if I said, all right, man, you can't come back here no more. Mm-hmm. Well, what? Well, I, you, you, you're a dope smoker. No, I ain't, man, I ain't no dope smoker. I, I, then it's my word against his word. And that would be unfair, wouldn't it? Because I'm not an eyewitness. But you ever seen somebody that's high before? You know what they look like, right? You think I forgot what high people look like? They up there too. Does this make sense? Yep, there are some things that are common. Is that right? <clears throat> but... The people today, if you know this spirit, is denying the Messiah. But look at the manifestation it's causing amongst these people, though. I mean, these people are, there's something else. Oh, McGee said, McGee said, last time I, I heard from him, he said, you are my enemy. I said, good, I'm glad you made yourself known. It's bad to be an enemy and known than an enemy running stealth. But you ain't telling me nothing I already didn't know. <laughs> Isn't that right? Isn't it better to know that you're enemies? Yes. Sure it is. So now I know how to treat you. Isn't that right? Hallelujah, man. That, at least you can give them credit for that. That's honorable. Did y'all read that Nehemiah 13? When Nehemiah got so mad at Israel and stuff because of all the abominations that they kept doing and bringing in, that the book said that Nehemiah cursed them. It said cursed them. Cursed them. Then it said that he smote them and he plucked all the hair out of their heads. That's a bad man right there. Huh? Yeah, he did. He beat them, cursed them, plucked their hair out of his head, and then asked y'all to remember him in blessings. You figure when we become Israel that we will have a, a, a hatred for sin. Isn't that the way it's supposed to work? Didn't sin deceive you? When it deceive you, wasn't it slewing you? Wasn't it working death inside of you? It's trying to kill you. Wasn't it? Wouldn't you think that automatically being on the Messiah's side that we'll have 
a, a godly antipathy against it? Yeah. yeah, we should. But you can if you relax it. That's right. All right, so he that denied the anti well, he that denied the father and the son, he's flat out antichrist. All right? So Zechariah says, and he answered and said unto me, This is the word of Yahweh to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, Yahweh of hosts. So everything is by his spirit, right? Everything is by his spirit. Now, in the age of information, ignorance is a what? You choose to be dumb on purpose. Did y'all cut these heaters on earlier this morning? Or y'all, did y'all cut them on last night? Y'all kind of cold? Y'all ain't? They were on last night? We should have had to cut them on two days in a row, huh? Got in, yeah. Got to figure it out. See, this is our first rodeo. We're going to talk about unconfessed sins today. Unconfessed sins. Hear that? Because I don't believe that we really truly have an understanding of the gravity of what happens to us when we hold on to stuff and refuse to confess it. We're actually making a secret pact in legions with the kingdom of darkness. Now, y'all hear me? I understand. I'm in this human body just like you are. We all got a war, right? Yeah, we do. We got a war. I mean, ain't none of us exempt from it. We all have our challenges. Ain't that right? Yes, we do. We all have our temptations. We all have stuff we have to battle and fight and overcome. Ain't that right? Every time I see a peanut m and man, that's a temptation like hell. And then Carol buys them and puts them right there, right there on the breakfast table at the very top of the bowl. That's just like the devil to bring a, a fruit and dangle it up in front of your face, isn't it? That woman, you gave me. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Unconfessed is. Truth manifests its courage to oppose evil, which in due time brings about love, peace, and harmony. It, but it takes a little time to get through it. Sin is legal grounds. For the enemy to cause trouble in your life. Sin is the doorway of Satan that Satan uses to attack and oppress us. So what do unconfessed sins do? What do unconfessed sins do? I mean, after all, we were mute. It seems like nothing would happen, nothing, you know, going on then, right? But the word says something totally different. Number one... They already working death in you. They cause death. You hear that? They already working in. And sometimes these unconfessed sins you already know. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. They hinder prayers. See, if you're in sin, you don't want to pray. You ever notice the reason why some of you don't want to pray sometimes? Because he don't like unclean things in his presence. And your conscience, your spirit is already condemned. You telling you, don't, don't you go there. Uh-oh. And you just thought you just didn't want to pray. Uh-oh. They separate us from Yah. And they also expose guilt. Now we're going to run down the scriptures behind all this, okay? Just so we can make sure we know. We're going to run them down, okay? Psalm 66, 18 says, I have seen wickedness or iniquity in my heart. Notice, where did he see it at? In his heart. So let me put emphasis on this. Don't be worried about the iniquity in everybody else's heart. Y'all's right. trying to save you. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? So let's put emphasis, add, make it added where it needs to be. The focus needs to be on me. I have seen iniquity in my heart. Yahweh would not hear. You hear that? Could that be the reason why we're praying and we ain't getting no answers? Huh? Think about that. 
Isaiah 59 too. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Y'all hear this? Yes, now mind you, when we went back over here, look. Cause death, hinder prayers, and they separate from y'all. Is that right? Yes, okay. Psalm 69 verse 5 from the scriptures. O Elohim, you yourself know my foolishness and my and so he already knows. He already knows. You know all you have to do if you got struggling, if you're struggling with something, all you gotta do is just ask y'all to help you. Huh? But see, what we do is we like trusting in the arm of flesh. We like trying to figure out everything ourselves. Yeah, well, let me research this. Let me do all this rather than asking, don't all our help come from y'all? Just ask for help. Are you following me? Every morning I get out of bed, I'm just saying, help me, y'all. First I say, thank you, Jesus. And I say, I need help. I need, I'm telling you, man, sometimes, man, the way this back be cutting up, boy, I mean, oh, I need help, Father. Help me. Mm. Hey, don't worry about it. You'll you, you get there one day. I wouldn't advise you did to do the things I've done to get there, but you, hopefully you don't never get there. I hope you don't never get there. I hope that you live a nice, pain-free, free, prosperous life. Hallelujah. But you know my foolishness and my guilt has not been hidden from you. So is there anything being hidden from y'all anyway? Now let me tell you something. This is how personal he is to us. If you're filled with the Ruach, you didn't do nothing but just make him your neighbor. Personal neighbor. Live in neighbor. So for sure ain't nothing hid. Our biggest challenge in life is actually admitting who we are. It is. The biggest challenge we have in life. Is and then opening up our mouth wide and then letting the only deliver that there is in the universe to help us to deliver us. I mean, don't he say things like this? I know what you have need of before you even ask. Don't he? Don't he teach you to make your request known before y'all? Yes, sure he do. And yet we enter into our education mode, don't we? Some things, we just need y'all to do it for us. Hallelujah. They also weigh us down. They also cause us to be consumed. Unconfessed sins do. There's this long list right here. All right. They also bring punishment. Y'all hear this? Yes, they do too. Over in 2 Timothy from the scriptures, chapter 3, verse 6, it says, For among them are those who crept into houses and captivate silly women. What kind of women are these? Silly women. And what are they? Laden, laden, or loaded. Down with sins, led away by various lusts. We too then, having so great cloud of witnesses all around us, let us lay aside. Hebrews 12, 1. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. You don't know the sin that easily entangles you? Yeah, you do. It's the one you do when ain't nobody around. Uh-huh. Notice. Lay it aside. Is that right? And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Isaiah 64, 7. And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself up to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our that's iniquity. So, iniquity causes you to be consumed. Is that right? Amos 3, 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will do what? For your what? 
Because judgment starts where? And if it starts at us, where is going to end for the sinners and the ungodly? You get that? It starts with us. They cause hardening of the heart. You ever had somebody, brothers and sisters, we're not talking about the world, just you're supposed to be brothers and sisters. You know, the Bible teaches us we're supposed to have fervent charity. Anybody know what fervent means? Does anybody know what fervent means as far as fervent charity? Fervent charity, yeah, passionate. Fervent, zeal. Fervent. Well, I mean, just that nice awe in your eyes when you see your brothers and sisters. Tell the truth. Some of us got hard hearts towards each other. And we put on that false sense of joy. We try to act like everything's all right because we go around everybody else, but still you're being eaten up on the inside. Isn't that right? Now let me remind you of something. Y'all love them like he love you. And he ain't no respect of persons. We better stop this foolishness. They cause the hardening of the heart. You know you got somebody in here you got a hard heart towards, you better repent and soften it up real fast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They cause one to be of Satan. Hebrews 3.12 says, look out brothers, lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of in falling away from the living Elohim. See ya. A wicked heart of unbelief will cause you to fall away. Y'all get that? It literally will. Now, you got to understand, we live in a world that didn't the Bible say in the last days knowledge was going to be increased? It didn't tell you if it was good or bad. It just said knowledge was going to be increased. Are you following me? So be careful. They cause disease. They cause many troubles and calamities in your life. I mean, think about it. If you, you got this kind of stuff going on inside of you, you know your outlook and perspective of things could be impaired. It could be skewed. You could, it could make you not see things the way that in the reality of what they really truly are. Are you following me? And it also causes a nation to be judged. When we go read the curses in Dabarim, 28 verses 15 through 68, we know that they cause disease. And you know, I think that's something that y'all should at least try to read once a month, man, just to remind you of what curses does. Are you following me? Psalms 103 verse 3 says, who forgive us all our crookedness or iniquity and who heals all your what? That's why I say if you got something going on, seek y'all first. If he leads you to go a, a, a certain way, then let him lead you. But don't you go lead yourself. Hallelujah. Now I live long enough to know that humans are stupid. Now if I insulted you, I'm sorry. But you cannot believe anything unless you have personally experienced it for yourself. Yeah, it is. Yeah, most of us can't believe nothing unless we experience it ourselves. It ain't true until I experience it. Now, how stupid you got to be? Wisdom teach you, damn it, if you got somebody telling you the truth about something, you ain't got to go experience and make an ass of yourself. And I tell them the truth, don't. Many of you still live in doubt and unbelief and do not know it. It rules your heart. So let's go back to Hebrews 3, okay? You take heed, brother, unless there be in any of you. Notice what kind of heart they call this, though. It didn't say a good heart. It said an evil heart of what? Unbelief. Because what stopped y'all sure from doing miracles? Only unbelief. Just Just unbelief. Just flat out unbelief. You can't see unbelief. It's in the heart. You can be sitting right there and the miracle's ready to be performed and you can short it out just by unbelief. Why y'all think a lot of times when somebody needs miracles, stuff, y'all don't ever see my standard operating procedure? Why everybody's all distracted and stuff, they come up, I usually try to get everybody busy and I go off on the side over here by myself because I don't need nobody around trying to hinder somebody blessing.
Y'all hear that? You remember when Yahshua had to put somebody out? Because they didn't believe. This unbelief stuff is very powerful. Yeah, it is. If two of us can touch together and agree, only one person can tear it all up. Just one. Can tear it all up. Notice all this has to do with us working on us. See, if we want the body perfected, we need to work on me. I need to work on me, you need to work on you. Instead of trying to fix everybody else, fix yourself. Hallelujah. No, for real. Fix yourself. We got so many complaints about everything, and the only one we ain't working on is ourselves. We're trying to fix it all, but we ain't trying to fix us. We ain't going to figure out the problem will probably be fixed when you fixed. All your sorrows and troubles will go away. Did I say something wrong again, man? Take heed as there be in the end of you an evil heart of unbelief in, in departing from the living God. Are we not seeing people depart? They're, um, they're really truly departing. Because I told you, don't nobody leave this to go on to be holier. More sanctified. I've never seen, I've never seen anybody leave this and show us how to do it. Never. I've always seen every one of them turn back to sin. But they relax it in their mind. They don't call it sin. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the what? Do you know that sin will convince you you're right? You know what sin rationalizes? Sin will bargain with you. It will. And the whole purpose is because it's trying to keep its grounds. Trying to keep its way because it doesn't want you to see that what you're really truly in is going to be your end. It don't want you to see it as becoming exceedingly sinful because if it does that, then you will repent. So it has to rationalize, it has to bargain. Yes, it does. It has to justify. And then when it gets a snare in you, then you go out and you go sin. Now you're in trouble. For we are made partakers of Messiah if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now what causes you to depart from Yah? Luke 21, 34 says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with gluttony. That's natural and spiritual gluttony. You know how in the world they got these things out there called comfort foods. You ever notice anytime you get them comfort foods, it ain't because you need something to eat. It's because you got something going on. Oh, I'm telling the truth. You know I am. And sometimes you try to go get the food so it can ignore all that stuff that's going on in you. You know what I mean? Call Dr. Mm. Then I can forget all the hell's going on. Mm. It always get quiet when you. It always does. It does. Oh, hallelujah. And drunkenness. That's when you're really feeling the pain. And you got to go get numb. You're not just sitting down having a casual drink. <laughs> a bottle. <laughs> Good God of mercy. A bottle? Ooh, Jesus. Mm. I've seen some people put a bottle down, but man, I tell you what, man, if you drink a whole bottle, you don't know how you feel the next day? Whew. Ain't you scared of alcohol poisoning? Man, that's seeing this working death then, isn't it? Drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day come up on you unawares. In other words, don't be distracted. Jesus explains the parable of the sower. So listen very closely, okay? Luke 8 9 says, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto them, And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of Yah. Did y'all hear that? So everybody say, Unto me, unto me. it's been given, it's been given. 
to know the mysteries or the secret things of the kingdom of Yah. Y'all hear that? But to others in parables. You ever know? I was talking this morning. Isn't y'all amazed? Is it not amazing how y'all can read this book or hear the word and it resonate with you? And then you look at somebody and say, don't you understand? No, I don't get it. I, I just, it don't make no sense to me. It, it don't make, and then you sit there marveling. What do you mean it don't make no sense? It's just that clear. What's the problem? Y'all is dealing with you because under you has been getting on to know the mysteries. I keep telling people, this book, see, it's easy for us to agree because we all got the same spirit. You know what I'm saying? And the Ruach is dealing with us in our perspective places when we're hearing this word. But man, there are some people, man, they, they literally struggle. I don't understand. I don't get this. Say it again. I don't care how many times you say it. If y'all don't open your understanding, you ain't getting it. That sin, they might not what? That means perceive. Sin, they might not perceive. You have eyes that the world don't have. You have eyes your natural family members don't have. You have eyes, I'm serious, that people you work around literally don't have. I'm serious. You can look out, you can discern, you can perceive, but there's, there's just nothing going on up there. That's because y'all's dealing with you. Hallelujah. And hearing, they might not understand. Do not marvel. I mean, do you not marvel at how you can comprehend the clear word of God? Does it not amaze you how others simply can't hear it? Listen, Yah has opened your understanding and not theirs. And for that, you should be happy. It's here. So be grateful. Because I remember when I didn't have any understanding. I remember that. Oh, yeah, I do too. Don't want to go back there either. Believe me, I remember. Uh huh. Luke 8 11 says, Now the parable is this the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Is that right? Those by the, notice, these are different areas. Those by the way, Side are they that hear, then come of the notice they're by the wayside. But here's the key with every single one of these each and every single one of them heard. It's just that their life has different manifestations. You see, what I could do is I could go through these parables and then use people we're familiar with and call their name so you could see exactly where they were when they fell away. Then they go, ah. That makes sense. All right? Fill in the gaps. And take away the word out of their what? But notice, these are the ones by the what? The wayside. They hear, then the devil come and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the enemy is working. As soon as the word is coming, the enemy is working to take it right out. Is that right? They on the rock are they which when they hear, they receive the word with joy. They receive the word with joy. joy. See, that's a different, that's different than the wayside, isn't it? They receive the word with joy. But watch this. And these have no root. See, none of these trees is strong without the root. None of them is strong the root. See, we live in the south out here. A wind can come and just blow the whole tree or the whole root system come up. And you sit and watch other trees, you could have, man, them things won't be down. But it's letting you know they got a strong root system. Are you following me? Same with these. Have no root, which for a while, they do what? Just for a while, though. Just for, that while could be one year, it could be five years, it could be 10 years, for a while. I mean, 15, 20, 30, 40 years really ain't long. Well, if you live 95 years old like Mother Bees, is that a long time? Ain't a long time. So, which for a while, believe, and in the time of, here it is. And in the time of what? And you know it's coming. You know it's coming. When temptation comes, they do what? And I'm telling you, the greatest things that cause people to fall away in temptation is lust. It's lust. It gets you every single time. When you've been torn around with it too much. Temptation. 
and that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard, notice everybody's still here. Is that right? When they have heard, heard, notice. Did you notice they all heard? You all should pay attention and discern people when you are giving them the word. Those by the wayside, they on the rock, and that which fell among thorns. Go forth and choke with the cares and and of this life. See, this way is a way of sacrifice. There's no room for selfishness in this way. Are y'all hearing me? That's the reason why so many people don't come. It's too much required. Look at a rich young ruler. Hmm? Look at a rich young ruler. Hey, uh, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments. Nah, no problem. No problem. Done all that from a youth up. Oh, yeah? Uh, which ones? Well, let me run them down for you. See them first four over here? They got to do with the creator. You know the six over here? I do it with the fellow man. Oh, I'm good. Really? You that good? Let's see how much you loved in. Sell all that you got. Uh-oh. 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 And you'll have great riches. Well, I'm going to enjoy my riches right now because I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't betting on nothing I can't see. Uh-oh. I ain't betting on nothing I can't see. See, it's a life of sacrifice. I told you, being, in, being an Israelite in this way, in the true way, is just like being in the military. The first thing they do is they, they figure it's going to take anywhere to take eight to ten weeks of boot camp to convert you from being a selfish individual to a soldier to where you care more about your buddy than you do yourself. I mean, really, in combat, you know, that there's buddies that, I mean, they will fight like dogs, go out and drink and howl at the moon and do PT and train together all day long, and then all of a sudden a grenade could come into a room and at that split moment in a second, a man will go run and jump on his grenade and sacrifice himself for his friends without even a thought. And no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his. See, in this, right, this way right here, this ain't no room for selfishness. You got to lay it down. And I'll tell you right now, the majority of problems that we have on the communities, all the communities, is somebody being selfish. Somebody trying to fight hard to keep a selfish way. I'm serious. That, I'm, they're trying to keep a selfish self afloat and alive without living a life of sacrifice. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, man. Now, other preachers can't talk like that because they don't live it. Other saints out there are not going to speak about it because they don't have the experience. This is an unselfish Dying out to yourself, wait. Consider others more than yourself. That's the book. That's the book. And when people can't hack it, because they didn't die to self. Y'all hear that? Didn't die to self. So the cares and the riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit, no fruit to what? Perfection. Perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard. See, so they're all here. Is that right? Yeah. Having heard the word, what do they do? Keep they keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Don't the teach us run his way race with patience? No teachers let patience have a perfect work. Huh? Don't your patience, you keep your soul? Oh, yeah. See what I mean? Because, man, it's got, man, I got, <laughs> you know how patience I got to be to live with Ashley? <clears throat> and Deacon Bell, that damn family something else. Yeah, we got to endure each other. Oh, yeah, we do. Ask if I've ever made her mad. Ask her. Have I ever made you mad? A hundred times. You remember one time 
I got in your face just like this and told you, you better stand that damn spirit down. You don't remember that? On the basketball court. Remember you kicked that damn ball? You were manifesting and I ran up in your grill? <laughs> he don't do nobody wife like that. See, wise guy, she wasn't married then. <laughs> know it all. Because she did that, I would have went in his face. I said, man, what the hell you let your wife get out of control like that for, man? Look at him looking. Look at him looking. You got to have patience to live like this. I'm serious. And they all these great, they got doctor's degrees with alphabets around them and they all avoid this lifestyle. They got theologian degrees. They ain't that the same? Somebody said, if they're a doctor, I'm like, doctor of what, though? <laughs> they got doctors of everything. So what are they a doctor of? Doctor of what? <laughs> doctor Doom? <laughs> hey, what happened? What happened? Somebody come and cut the thing on. Just don't sit and look at it. Ariel, like, it ain't my fault. <clears throat> I'm just here. <laughs> but to live in this is a complete, total, 100% dying out, submitting to yourselves, one to another, in the fear of Yah. I know the challenges of Brother Brett because I've seen him with Elder Doug. Saints breaking shit, tearing up every damn thing. Guess who fixed it? And I told them both, I said, you know the best way to get that done? I said, every time something break, that they done break, broke it, have them right there with you when you fix it. Here, take this off. Here, here's a wrench. Do, undo this, do that. It'll, stop, it'll sober up real quick. I ain't I ever said that to you? I said, it'll fix them. It sure will. I said, you won't believe how that when you got to sit and go fix something yourself and inconvenience your time. How sober you get. I'm telling you, there is something spiritual living community. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We are all sharpening. We sharpen each other. I, man, it is straight up iron. Versus, I ain't saying iron sharp. I said iron versus iron. It is straight up iron versus iron. And boy, if you really think you all that sharp, we'll put you with that doubt. <laughs> we'll find out how sharp you are. We'll find out how sharp you are real quick. You gonna find out if you sanctified or not. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is real talk. Y'all in them homesteads, y'all know what I'm talking about, and I tell the truth. True. And boy, them spirits get the ministry. Woo wee. I remember the first thing I had to deal with when we got here. One of, one of the first things. You know what one of the first things were? What was that? I had to deal with other people worrying about who was in the garden and who wasn't in the garden. They said, How about you happy you here? They literally couldn't be at peace because the other brother or sister wasn't there. They'll be in the garden working, looking around, waiting for them to show up. And I said, you still ain't going to have no peace even if they show up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have, man, I, you know what? I'm going to pray that the Most High Yah give us some more acres so we can grow a, a big 20-acre cornfield. Oh, I ain't finished yet. I ain't finished by a long shot. I'm telling you a true experience. I've been down there picking corn in a cornfield. And I sit there and watch grown men on all fours 
crying up a storm, screaming, oh, I can't take it no more. I'm like, damn, can't take what? I can't take it. No, no more. I said, bro, you're doing a good work for the saints. To hell with that. <laughs> In a cornfield. On all fours. I mean. <laughs> man, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? I mean, it was hot. I give you that. And them blades of corn, that stuff make you itch. I'll give you that. But I've seen them all fours crying like babies. Talking about they can't take it. Now y'all want to get to the cornfield? No, this ain't out there being out there 20, 30 minutes and say, we done for the day. No, no, this starting at 7 o'clock in the morning and they start hitting their knees about 6 o'clock at night. And we still ain't done. Uh, you won't believe how many spirits ministered to you when you out there in that field. Really? Yes, sir. See? So ain't nobody going to pray with me now, ain't you? <laughs> to get that cornfield. I kid you not. I, I, I marveled at it. I just, they just wasn't there. They just wasn't there. Just couldn't take it. Bro, you're going to be eating the corn. <laughs> and we're laboring for the saints. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story. You remember me telling you that? Down in Walterboro, remember me telling you that? Carol just, just it was one of the things, how do you believe it? Grown men on all fours. Alligator tears streaming. And, and, and some of you don't think that you do the same thing. See, it wasn't the ones that was on the community that do it all the time. It was the ones that come visiting. They, they thought they were all that in a bag of chips. Yeah, yeah. That's what community is like. Yes, sir. It's a true cross. It's the cross of Messiah. I'm telling you straight up. Y'all right? Good. But that was on good ground. Are they which in the good an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Warning signs for you to be aware of so that you will not fall. Second Peter 2.10 says, but chiefly then will walk out in the lust of the flesh of uncleanliness and despise government. despise government, meaning despise authority. Yeah. See, everybody look at Elder Doug's little baby face back there. <laughs> And all they know Elder Doug. Man, that's just such a kind elder. All but Mama Nelly. Mama Nelly said, I said, oh, I'm staying the hell away from him. He looked like some type of damn roll cop or something. That's <laughs> what she said. She said it when she first got here. Uh-uh, uh-uh, mm-mm. <laughs> and boy, when he got to get in your face and correct you, woo. Uh, that's that fight right there. And then he get louder when he see that. Uh. Ooh. Mm. Then it, he gives you the opportunity to hate him. Notice I said opportunity. Yeah, opportunity of a lifetime. Despise government. Despise those that are in authority. Uh-oh. Whoever, who in the world has ever taken heed to themselves to make sure that they don't despise those that are over them. Any of you wives, you ever thought about that when you kick and buck up against your husband? I ain't hear nothing. Yes, sir. You ain't never thought about it. Because they're going to do something to make you 
despise government. Just like you're going to do something to make them bitter. It didn't say you're going to be bitter. It said he's going to be bitter. Y'all hear that? Challenges. Children, parents. Oh, yeah. Brothers, other brothers over them. Authority figures. See, when you're unclean, you despise government. So the relief of today is, is to take the Roman option and kick the traces. Because you don't want no righteous authority over you. Hey, hey, come on, man. You head of the Clarksville Saints. Ain't you experienced brothers who say they love you, despise you? Not Brother Ron. Come here, Brother Ron. There ain't no way. Look at Brother Ron. I can't you despise that baby face right there, man. Big old man, brother, broad shoulder, big chest, and them hocks down there, and that nice face, man. That, how? How? There ain't no way. Look at Brother Ron. Man, how do you despise him? But it happens, don't it? Yes, sir. And sometimes it goes past the spite to hate, though, don't it? Yes, sir. You hear that? No, he, he, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And don't it hurt you? I make do. It hurts, though, don't it? Yes, sir. See, nobody ever considered the one in authority because it's all about you and your selfish self. Uh-huh. Ain't nobody thinking about the mission because it's all about me, myself, and I. It's all about me being self-centered, self-focused, and self-absorbed. Forget about the whole me. Because he corrects you, he's doing it because he got a personal vendetta against you, right? No. Thank you, my brother. Yes, sir. See, nobody ever considered him. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. I told you it's an opportunity of lifetime. Because look, it says, and it did define it from the very beginning. But chiefly, principle, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government. The Bible said, presumptuous are they. What are they? What are they? What are they? And boy, let me tell you, you live around brothers, you'll find out how presumptuous you are and they are. Somebody said, ah, no, you can't do that when you go to church and you go to home. And then you go back to church next week. Then you go home. Having fellowship, you ain't going to experience all this. But when you live together, oh boy. You're going to find out. You ain't who you think you are. Ain't that right, brother Rashad? You ain't who you think you are. Everybody gets corrected. I got some news flash for you too. Even the one in authority gets corrected when he's corrected. Because in his correction, he's got limitations that he got to go, he can't go past. We got him looking. Ooh, I know all about you. Elder Doug, don't it hurt when you have to correct? Especially when you got to tell him again and again and again. Mm. Presumptuous are they self will and they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whew. That's a high lofty spirit, isn't it? And most of those walking after the flesh in the filthy lust and despising authority, same thing from the scriptures, behold, look, headstrong. Y'all met some headstrong brothers and sisters? No, I'm talking about headstrong. I'm talking about their head is harder than its flow. You can tell them, come on, brother, we need to go right. Damn it, as soon as you out of the present, they're going left. <laughs> Don't we experience this straight way? Yes, oh, no, not y'all. Not y'all sanctified people. Like there's no way. <laughs> Shucks. <laughs> Gee, man. We, we going to go see the governor. <laughs> no, ain't no way that we going to do that now. <laughs> Let's 
strong speaking evil of esteemed ones. Remember King David? Remember King David? Watch this. Reality of unconfessed sins. 1 King 15, 5, and David or Dawid. For Dawid did what was right in the eyes of Yahweh and did not turn aside from all that he had commanded him all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now think about this for a second. You think about some of this false doctrine they got going on today. What is a Hittite doing fighting in, the, in an Israelite army? And, and why is Yah bringing judgment on, on his man for killing someone of another nation? I keep telling y'all, y'all ain't no respect of persons. Israel, he expect a lot out of us. Yes, he does. Now, the, now, think about that. Look at that. He commanded him all the days of his life, except that means that's the sin that y'all remember. In the matter of your right here type. Now, does it make sense when we're reading the renewed covenant that says some men's sins go before them to judgment? Some men's sins come after them. How many times did y'all tell David, I have put your sin away from you? So he's going to have to trust in his Savior to finish that too. Y'all get that? So just let us know, man. At least we got a little bit of hope. But my advice. My advice to each and every one of you is to search your hearts. Yes. And don't have anything. Don't, you don't need no exceptions. No exception coming behind you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why would Yahweh remember the sin, this sin of David? Why? Psalm 51. There is not a record of a blood sacrifice. See, this is the deception and the deceitfulness of sin. You don't confess sin where you justify yourself. You don't confess sin that you believe you're right in. Why you think you continue on in the same condition? Same matter. Makes no difference how uncomfortable the environment is around you. This is the deceitfulness of sin. This is the deception of sin. When you justify yourself, but see, he didn't get no blood sacrifice even though David repented in sackcloth and ashes. What did he repent in sackcloth and ashes for? For y'all not to take the child. He wasn't thinking about your eye. Think, very few people remember another sin of David that he committed. He numbered the people in 2 Samuel 24, right? This sin is usually not remembered because there was a sacrifice. There was a sacrifice. In the renewed covenant, there are three conditions to receiving forgiveness. Three conditions to receiving forgiveness. The blood of Jesus is the final payment for all our sins, past, present, and future if we meet three conditions. If we meet three conditions. See, the struggle is real. All of us are in this. We're in the war of our lives. Y'all hear me? We are literally in the war of our lives. Are you following me? And the enemy, he makes sure that you know that he exists. Yes, he does too. You know what? He makes sure he's so active in our life. He's more active in our lives than the Holy Spirit is. Yes, he is too. He don't rest day or night. He always on us. Number one, we must repent. It's more than changing the mind. It's changing the heart. You got to change the heart. If you confess something with your mouth, then, then guess what? You need to start and let your footprint line up with it. Yeah, you do. Footprint needs to be lining up with what comes out of your mouth. And see, what we're doing today is the same thing they used to do of old. We confess, call that the sacrifice, but our heart ain't with the confession, so we continue on in iniquity. And then we have that soft spirit. Let me just go meet the conditions good, and I keep on with my same mindset. Keep on my same way. Uh-oh. That's doing despite People can accept truth with their minds, yet not let that truth get down into their heart and change them completely. When the, when the heart of a person is affected by truth, a change of behavior takes place. Because you don't repeat these same mistakes. 
Fruit. Meat for repentance. Brother Saint, read that. Matthew chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. Y'all doing okay? Yes. Fruit that meet repentance. It's not enough to just sit there and say the words. And it's not enough at that particular moment to change your life. But you must bring forth the fruit that lines up with the repentance. In other words, we have to see the fruit of your life that it mimics the fruit of the Spirit. Read. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. Generation of what? Of vipers. Well, we got that generation beaten on if they were vipers, what are we today? And vipers are pretty bad. Come on. Old generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits. Bring therefore what? Fruits. Fruits that do what? Meat for repentance. In other words, we need to see something in your life that's going to line up with your testimony of repentance. Number two, if we do not forgive our others and ourselves, the Father will not forgive us. Now, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. Do you know sometimes you can get so down on yourself because you get so tired of your own wicked way that you end up hating yourself and despising yourself? You don't hear that? You will literally end up hating and despising yourself. You got to forgive yourself and others. Y'all get it? Number three, we must accept Yahshua as the Messiah and allow him to be our master and salvation. In other words, you got a head over you. Somebody going to tell you what to do. Two baptisms are emphasized. The first with water, the second with the spirit. The baptism with the spirit, only Yahweh can give it to you. This is where everybody goes off in their wicked, nefarious doctrines out there. See, because when the Spirit, the Ruach, gives somebody the same Holy Spirit that we have, Yah has already chosen them and letting you know as a confirmation that, and a sign for them as well as us that they are his people. Y'all getting that? So, preaching the baptism of repentance, baptism of the Holy Spirit, Mark 1, 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of? Notice, he preached the baptism of what? Repentance for the remissions of sins. Emotions, feelings, and thoughts. These are very real. As a matter of fact, they control the majority of our lives without us even thinking about it. James told us, or let me say my famous word, Jacobo. A double-minded man is unstable in how many ways? Proverbs 20 verse 19 says, He that goeth about as a talebearer reveal of what? Therefore, 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 not with him that flattered with his lips. Y'all get that? Now let's look at this talebearer thing. A scandal monger. You know any brothers and sisters there telling you, turn around, all they do is keep up scandal? Scandal monk, a slander, an informer, one that carries tales. That's what a talebearer is. Secrets, a person in close deliberation by implication, intimacy, secrets, counsel. Proverbs 24, 21 says, My son, fear you Yahweh and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. One who repeats the same behavior. Who ever thought that? Who ever thought that? Do again to disguise oneself. Do the second time. We think it changed. Somebody changed their opinion, changed the way they, their disposition is, all that. But look at here. Who'd ever thought? They, the one who keep on repeating the same thing again and again and again and again and again. Whew. See the reason why you have to look behind the words? Proverbs 14, 29, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. 
but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Let's look at this folly. Silly. One who despises wisdom. One who mocks when guilty. One who is quarrelsome. Some of you are so unstable, you'll never know who you are going to be talking to at any given time. You know, that, that other spirit, that alternate ego, and that alternate conscience come out. Psalms 119 verse 80 says, let my heart be sound in thy statutes. The statutes is something prescribed. Oh, let me go there. I was going there anyway. That I be not ashamed. Statutes, something prescribed like a task or an action. An enactment or decree. That means actually walking out and living the word. James 1.19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let not let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Yah. Don't get that? Wrath, anger, vengeance, indignation. Anger, natural disposition, temper, character, movement, or agitation of soul, impulse, desire, any violent emotion, but anger, wrath. It goes on, indignation keeps on repeating itself. Indignation, to be angry, to be vexed, indignant, be wroth, be grieved, provoked to anger, and wrath. To be displeasing, sad. Who'd ever thought that being vexed is sad? Huh? To be injurious, be evil, wicked. To suffer hurt, injury. Now you think about this for a second. Okay, somebody does something to you and you suffer the hurt for it and you're the one that's vexed. Don't it seem like a setup? Because after all, you wouldn't have been vexed if they didn't do that to you, right? But you're supposed to be spiritually sound and mature to not receive that vexation. Oh boy. Now we're not expecting more out of the, that you can do. Wicked to injure the wickedly and mischief. Temptation is when you are tempted to act out the nature or nature of man and woman. James 1.13 says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yah. For Yah cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and what? Enticed. Now how does the enemy do this? First of all, he put a thought into your mind. Isn't that right? And everybody know their own temptation. It's like you already know where you're bitter at. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And that's the hook that is in the jaw that Satan uses as legal grounds to have right and sway over you. So you have to know what your temptation is. You follow me? So he can't have power over you. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Verse 15. Then when lust have conceived, it bring forth sin... And sin, when it is finished, bring forth what? Death. Death. Here's the warning. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise and simple. Can you imagine how many people out there go to assembly every week and the message is centered on trying to get some people to realize who they are as opposed to what they need to be doing. A message is trying to get them to realize if you have enough faith in y'all, your ship going to come in one day rather than cleaning all this mess out of your ship. <laughs> you understand what I mean? The process of sanctification is about you being cleansed. Purify your hearts. You sinner. You hear that? This whole action of the reason why the Most High God called us into this is so that it'll be easy for us to enter into the kingdom because we're divesting ourselves of every evil, wicked thing of the flesh. Is that making sense? And that's literally a full-time job. See, because you don't want these sins to weigh you down or keep you from going up. Are you following me? And imagine, so look how blessed we are that we're able to hear the things that we need to scrub our inner man's will. Continually. Just blessed. No discharge in this war. We ain't gonna be finished fighting this until the end. 
You're going to be fighting this until the day you die. So that's why the book says, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. The season is when your change come. See, you hear that? You see, in this life, this is a season. When the breath guard is body, you into another season. That's when your changes come. Yeah. You can say, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of glory. And not only for me, but all those who have overcome. Hallelujah. So rather than us looking at this, oh, I'm good, man, 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 you need to get motivated that you got an opportunity to fight. But dang, past sometimes I get tired of fighting. I don't. Dead men don't fight. Are we not up against a form before, yes or no? Do we not know it's standard operating procedures to wear you out? Yes or no? So why not just reverse it in your mind and you wear his ass out? And you'll change it. Why not get a little bit of tenacity about yourself? Man, don't you? See, I'm telling you, man, most of y'all, you should get a hell of a lot more active in deliverance. Because, boy, when you casting demons out of someone, help someone get free, man, if you really want to be in tune with your spirit, that inner man rises up. Yeah, it does, too. Feel good, too. Sure do feel real good. Feel real good. Y'all never see me up here in mass deliverance. When we do a mass deliverance, sometimes I'll just bust out laughing. I get called every name under the sun. Sometimes I go back there and the spirit be manifest. They ain't even looking at me. Next thing you know, I get cussed out. They can tell my presence is there. And they ain't even looking at me. <laughs> you got to change your mind instead of keeping a defeatist mentality. Your flesh is going to get weary sometime. Huh? But know that you're doing well. Does that make sense? Know that you're doing well. You know, in, in, in the service, um, let me, there's two different perspectives and mindsets from civilians and, and then trained soldiers. Civilians, whenever fire is going, you know, we always tell y'all to what? Duck, get down, right? Soldiers run, they're trained to run to fire. No, for real, when the fire comes, they're trained to actually run to it, get at it. A total different mindset. You, know, you follow me? First of all, the reason men is because they're trained soldiers. Totally different mentality. Don't mean they're a better person than you are. It's just that they're trained. Are you following me? So the same way that they have been trained that way, we've got to train our minds that whenever the enemy is attacking, we got to bring the attack on him. We can't be sitting back listening to his damn ministry. <laughs> you understand what I mean? You can't be sitting back doing that mess, man. You got to become tenacious, man. Huh? I'm serious. You got to really... Dig down deep. That make sense? When this battle's over, we shall well cry. Huh? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to put that crown on when you know that you fought though? Yes, Hallelujah. Wouldn't it? And everything ain't the damn end of the world. Sometimes, man, what do you say, sister, somebody put a 10 on a 2? Sometimes y'all take stuff and, rah! everybody else be looking like this, and you done bought it all the way up here. It's real on the scale of everything, nothing but a 2, but you done made it a 10. And everybody said, what the world, man? Ain't you got something else better to do? Just something, anything. So realize, you're in a fight. You have a formidable foe. He ain't going to stop. He accuses us before y'all day and night. He is the accused of the brother. So you're going to be lied on. You're going to be misrepresented. Ain't that right? Don't people lie on you? Don't they? Don't they falsify information, don't they? Don't they do it? Don't people hurt you? 
Don't they disappoint you? But you don't do a damn thing. <laughs> ain't that right? Some of y'all already knew where I was going, didn't you? <laughs> Ross, I ain't getting caught up in this one. Not no more. <laughs> Elder mentioned him going on. When he started doing something like that, I'm shutting up. Because I know he's coming right back around. <laughs> That's how they do out there in the Baptist church. They make it all about everybody else doing you wrong. That's when they get the most shouts. Now bring out the offering plate. <laughs> Tug on your sorry emotions and feelings. Hallelujah. And then when it's all said and done, then he preached a good message. Yeah, what did he say? Don't know. Sure was good, though, didn't we shout? I went to some churches, all they did was just live to just shout. They didn't care what the word said, just as long as you just hit that, hit that, hit that A minor, a, B, B flat minor. Hit that K note. Just dun, dun, dun. Oh! All my troubles are gone away. Dun, dun, dun. Hey! Now, don't get me wrong. I love shouting now. I do. I mean, it, 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 there's some deliverance in it. Yes, it is, too. There's some deliverance in it. Man, but, man, when you can tell people, they just keep sitting on the edge of the seat just waiting. Dun, dun, dun. It's over with. As soon as they hear that, dun. I had somebody ask me, they said, hey, brother, Doc, why people do that? And I said, because them demons have just been sitting there simmering so long, they got to get them go run, do something with them, because they're about to tear them up, take them over. I wonder why women never like me when I preach. They were some of my worst enemies, boy. They really come down on me hard. Mm. But anyway, hey, matter of fact, Alan, we need to work on some, some, some old-fashioned shout. Bah, bah, bah. Get D up here. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Maybe that's the only thing that gets some of y'all move. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with dancing and shouting. If you notice, you go look online, very few people forget the Christian church. That's a farce. I'm talking about in holiness, in the movement. They, they don't even praise y'all. They don't even clap their hands. They don't even praise y'all. They don't even lift up their hands. They don't do nothing. But I understand, though, because praise is only comely to the upright. Yeah. Don't believe me. I get it. It's only for us. Only reserved for us. And you white folk, y'all got to move out of the way and watch us black folk dance. <laughs> then you'll be able to catch on. You see what we're doing. You know, then, then it may get on you one day. Hey! I get some up and give you a, a Holy Spirit class dance, dance class team. She got about five of them, boy. She can do them too. She can get it. Casey Nelly, she can get it too, boy. She can, ah! Boy, it's over with. <laughs> Make you want to dance? Let us stand. <laughs> oh, y'all good, ain't he? All right, so. At the end of this message and everything, let's go ahead and realize this. Listen, don't take a chance when you know that you're dealing with something like unconfessed sins, if you're dealing with it. First of all, if you're actively involved. Don't sit up there and, and, and bank on that one day it's just going to go away. You need to center in, hone in, and really, really confess it and get it out of the way. And then let's go on to the next one. Because life is sure as a hell of a lot easier when you don't have all these demons working in. Sure, they don't mean they're going to stop now. They, they come in different ways. They come in different ways. But, but I tell you what, you sure will be ready to even more so. Get past the base-minded things. The simple stuff. Come on, let's graduate. You know what I mean? Let's try to go on up a couple of tiers. Let's be some real true warriors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, everybody that falls away, he that wore the good warfare does not entangle himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him or call him to be a good soldier. So you can see right now, most people, they, they don't, they don't, forget that, I went AWOL. I ain't even in it no more. I'm tired of fighting. I'm gone. 
and the world is just an excuse. Y'all hear me? The world's just an excuse. So whatever the fight that the enemy is bringing, you bring it twice as hard. Well, he gonna come harder. Then damn it, go harder. It's about this mindset. Hallelujah. And don't search back from deliverance. Glory to the king. All right. Hey, um, Elder Bell, how many chairs did we have in here the last time when we did the feast day? Do you remember how, how many we had set out? 608? I put a cap at 700. Is that too tight? All right. And of course, we can go back through that too a little bit. So that should be because we didn't even fill up all those. These don't think we did because people was everywhere. Isn't that right? I mean, I looked on the video. I didn't see it all. So we, all right, so we're going to cap it off maybe at 700. We may change it. We may change it. But all of you are planning on coming for Passover, I hope you call. And, uh, and don't everybody call. I hope everybody didn't call last night. <laughs> Filling up our answer machine. Tape don't work no more. I mean, at least, I should say, at least give us first day, right? First day after 7 o'clock. Maybe something like that, right? But then again, I did say call, though, didn't I? I guess I need deliverance. Double-minded person unstable in all their ways. I need deliverance then, day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Most of y'all, we thank you for this word that we're able to hear. Thank you for making us strong in you and in the power of your might. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that never loses power. Father, protect us, watch over us, because the enemy has really, truly been after us this dead season. We thank you for your holy angels being encamped around about us, watching over us, ministering to us continually, and keeping us with the fight and the tenacity of this war. We thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and for this we'll serve you, continue to keep on worshiping you and praising you, living for you and warring for you in the magnificent name of Jesus, Thank you for the power and the strength, and thank you for all things, our Father, in Jesus' magnificent name. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. King is coming.